Well, now check this out. Was really hoping to catch it. The northern lights spotted in Northern California. The National Weather Service says a severe geomagnetic storm could bring the northern lights and so-called aurora borealis as far south as Alabama. The display is usually only found within the Arctic Circle. Yeah, they do these cruises up to Alaska and stuff where you see it or to yeah. Norway. I've always wanted to see it. I we know. had our <laughs> shot. Yeah. Didn't quite see it here in Sacramento, but what are the chances we right. might see something over the weekend? Much less. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. You know, but, it, but there is a chance. There, is there, there hope? There is a chance. Yeah. yeah, but the chance is much less. I mean, last night was uh, pretty, you know, the most significant storm we've had, solar yeah. storm, in what, six years, I believe. So, um, but if you were high enough last night, you could have seen it over Sacramento. If you were high enough, so there was a, I saw someone on a flight that was from LA to Phoenix. And looking north, and you could see that. So, uh, it, really impressive to see, say the least, with the pictures coming in. But let's talk about how we get the auroras to form, right? Uh, here's the planet. These lines are the Earth's magnetic field, right? So, when you have a burst of energy uh, coming off of the sun, usually with, uh, with uh, photons, electrons, protons, I should say, and electrons, it interferes with the Earth's magnetic field, which kind of acts as a shield, right? So, it deflects them. And they come in around and come in across uh, where it's. Uh, at the weakest point, which is right there by the poles. And what happens is when you have so much of it, it the Earth's magnetic field can't deflect them all. So they start to interact with some gases up in the uh, upper atmosphere. And depending on the type of gas uh, that these uh, protons and electrons interact with, the amount of energy that gets released is in the form of light. That's photons. And the type of gas gives you different colors. So oxygen uh, gives you, typically, depending on what altitude or what level you're at, gives you uh, red and green, where it's blue and pink are from other gases way up in the atmosphere. So you tend to see that in lower latitudes when you have an excessive amount of protons and electrons that have been emitted from the sun. So when it comes to potential viewing today, not nearly as far south. Now, there's still a chance, right? But the best chances are going to be further to the north, across Washington State and Idaho. And you can follow the line here, and certainly across uh, the northern latitudes when you cross over into Canada. We do have clearing skies across our area, though. So that is nice for the potential for some viewing, but I don't expect to see that here over Sacramento, especially if we didn't see it last night. Unlikely to see it tonight. Winter storm watches, by the way, getting ready for the next storm. It's far up to the north right now. In fact, it's right off the Gulf of Alaska. It really hasn't developed yet, but this will be impacting us early into this week. For tomorrow, beautiful stretch of weather, a lot of sunshine, temperatures running cool. It will be breezy through the day tomorrow, and then we'll begin to watch that next storm that will be coming in early on Tuesday, late Monday night, Tuesday, and some residual effects lingering into Wednesday. So we'll time out that forecast for you. Here it comes, late Monday night. The rain starts coming in across parts of the valley. Snow levels will be about 3,000 feet. At some points, it will be down 2,500 feet late Tuesday. But you can see the rain most widespread going into the day Tuesday and then uh, continuing to be more showery in nature by Wednesday, where we're looking at about an inch or so of rainfall for much of the valley, less as you work your way down to the south. And several feet of snow is what we can expect for the Sierra, two to four feet. And that is from Monday through Wednesday's time frame. So with all those impacts, Tuesday is a first alert action day. But then later next week, we start going into a bit of a drier pattern. How was that for a change? <laughs> yeah, Probably. we'll take it. Yeah. Definitely. Thanks, Nick.